This is a tumour composed of cells with abundant pink staining granular cytoplasm and this is called a, surprise surprise, granular cell tumour. Granular cell tumours are thought to be predominantly neuroectodermal in origin and the granular appearance is due to the presence of lysosomes in the cytoplasm and these lesions are usually benign. Older terms for granular cell tumours include granular cell myoblastoma and abricosoft tumour. The most frequent site for granular cell tumours to occur in is the skin and subcutis. They occur slightly more frequently in females than males and in 10% of cases granular cell tumours may be multiple, especially in black patients. Common sites involved include the trunk, vulva and tongue and less commonly they can occur in the breast, gastrointestinal tract and larynx. Usually granular cell tumours are less than 3 cm across they have a hard consistency and are usually ill-defined. Histologically, the granular cells have abundant eosinophilic or pink staining granular cytoplasm. The nuclei are small and central. The cells may be arranged in nests and trabeculae and the stroma is often fibrous and this would explain their hard consistency. When granular cell tumours arise below stratified squamous epithelium in the skin or mucosa, the epithelium may be hyperplastic and it may be so hyperplastic that it resembles carcinoma. This is also known as pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. Useful immunostains for granular cell tumour include S100 and NSE, both of which are positive, and a proportion of granular cell tumours show PAS diastase resistant staining. This granular cell tumour has been stained for PAS and there is no magenta staining so the PAS stain is negative and this is not really surprising as only approximately 30% of granular cell tumours do show positive staining for PAS and this really illustrates the fact that PAS is not a particularly useful stain for granular cell tumours given that the majority fail to stain for it. This is a granular cell tumour arising in the skin. At a higher magnification the granular nature of the cytoplasm is revealed and between the granular cells there are streaks of dark pink staining tissue and these are bands of fibrous tissue typical of the fibrous stroma of granular cell tumours and this is why on palpation granular cell tumours feel hard. This shows the epidermis at the edge of the biopsy away from the granular cell tumour and the epidermis is thin and appears normal but if we look at the epidermis directly above the granular cell tumour, it is clearly thickened and hyperplastic. Finally, this is a granular cell tumour of the tongue. The granular cell tumour is the pale pink staining area towards the bottom of the picture and at the top you can see the stratified squamous epithelium. But the stratified squamous epithelium has very irregular tongues at the basal aspect that appear to be pushing into the submucosa and this could be easily misinterpreted as infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma. But this is a really good example of pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia in the stratified squamous epithelium overlying a granular cell tumour.